I'm excited to be here to talk about sustainability, especially as it's getting a lot of our attention as well as your attention. And we expect that uh, that trajectory will continue to grow for 2023. We're starting to see a big shift towards sustainable product demands and solutions uh, coming towards us. Just in the last uh, few years alone, we've had a lot of conversations with engineering firms, uh, owners and developers, and even contractors that are looking to us to try and help them understand uh, what sustainable solutions are, are available now and what sustainable solutions will be coming to us in the future. And you can see uh, some of the brands of the companies that we've worked with recently to help them through this. Another point to this that we're seeing in terms of trends in the market, I attended the American Society of Concrete Contractors conference earlier this year, and I was curious to, to find out from them how important uh, carbon footprint reduction, sustainability was to their companies. Again, I surveyed contractors, right? So I asked them the importance of uh, the CO2 footprint to their company. And surprisingly, 74% of them reported that it was a medium to high importance for their own companies. I was also curious, how important was it to their customers? So the developers, the owners of the world, and they reported that 93% of them um, were at a medium to high level in terms of importance for their customers. What was also very interesting to find out in this poll was how many had participated in a project where sustainability was included along with price in terms of the decision factor to who would be awarded the project. And 55% of them had already participated in a procurement process such as this. So it's definitely interesting as we see uh, the private markets demand more sustainable solution. Another thing that we're starting to see is that regulations and government policies are also starting to require more sustainable solutions. And that's happening on a few different fronts. Uh, the first area is where government and legislatures are requiring your cement producers to uh, reach certain targets. As an example, out in California, they've committed to reaching net zero cement production by 2045. Um, so obviously that has an impact on your cement and concrete producers. Um, we're also seeing in your, in your departments of transportation, some cities and counties where they're starting to request uh, environmental product declarations to be provided along with mixed design submittals um, and the like. The goal of that is, is that they'll start to be able to require um, that concrete mixes are submitted with a lower carbon footprint. So we're definitely seeing demands not only in the private sector, but also in the public sector for uh, lower, lower carbon footprint, more sustainable solutions and products uh, to the market. The ultimate goal is for Semex to deliver net zero carbon dioxide concrete by the year of 2050. So we definitely have a lot of work to do, not only ourselves, but also working with our suppliers and our customers to be able to achieve these goals. As part of that, we would like to be working on delivering more sustainable products and solutions. If you look at a cubic yard of concrete, as an example, and you look at what makes up the carbon footprint of that cubic yard, what you'll start to find out is that cement makes up about 85 to 90% of the carbon footprint of a cubic yard of concrete. You can take a look at aggregate, sand, water, admixtures, transportation, that sort of thing, but really those don't make up a whole lot of impact um, in terms of the carbon footprint of a concrete mix. So when we're trying to figure out how to reduce our carbon footprint, we're gonna spend a lot of time working on the cement side of things. So the question is, is what are we doing in the cement uh, business to try and reduce that carbon footprint? So the first thing we're trying to do is reduce what's called the clinker factor. And so we're moving to products you've probably heard of, of 1L cement or Portland limestone cement, um, which has a lower clinker factor than you would get in your traditional type 1, 2 cement, as an example. The nice thing about that 1L cement is we're able to reduce our carbon footprint by about 7 to 10%. And by just switching over from that type 1, 2 cement to your 1L cement. What's likely to come behind that um, in a few years is alternative or blended cements. 
And we'll talk a little bit more about that in our one-on-one conversations and, and when that would happen. But again, the whole goal of that is to reduce your clinker factor and in turn, reduce the carbon footprint of the product we produce. Now, we're also doing some really great things in the production of the cement to help reduce that carbon footprint. One of the first things we're doing is using alternative fuels. Um, Instead of using coal and pet coke, as an example, we're using tires and natural gas and and other sorts of things that can burn, heat up the kiln, but have a lower carbon footprint when we do that. We're doing hydrogen injection, and that allows us to do more alternative fuels. We're also doing some really cool things with renewable energy. We've got some windmills um, and other sources of, of energy that we're using to try and power up those mills. One of the key elements to actually achieving net zero concrete is going to be the utilization of carbon capture. We've got two really cool projects that are going on right now at two of our cement plants where we're learning how to to accomplish this. And it will definitely be a key player in the uh, carbon reduction. Now, if you take a look at a cubic yard of concrete and you look at how do you reduce the carbon footprint of that concrete, one of the key Elements to that is using supplementary cementitious materials. The graph that we're showing you here on the left is using ordinary Portland cement or OPC. And as you take cement out of your mix and you put in uh, supplementary cementitious materials, your carbon footprint is going to be reduced as we show on the slide. If you look on the far right hand side of this slide, it shows you the impact of using Portland limestone cement. So in a standard six sack mix of concrete, um, by switching from 100% ordinary Portland cement to 100% Portland limestone cement, you're going to reduce your carbon footprint by about 6%. And then um, additionally, by adding more SCMs to that, you can reduce it even further. So it definitely has a big impact. One of the takeaways that I see from this is, while this is a good first step, it's not clearly enough. We need to be doing even more to reducing our carbon footprint if we want to achieve the goals that we've set. We do have some really good technical data supporting the utilization of Portland limestone cement, and we'll be sharing that with you in greater detail uh, coming this year. One of the research documents that we can share with you is some work that was done and funded by the California Department of Transportation with some very well-respected researchers up at Oregon State University, where they took six different limestone cements, and they put 86 different mixed designs together, and they tested it every way you possibly can, from looking at compressive strength to alkali silica reactivity to shrinkage, set time, a lot of different tests. And one, a few of the things they found out was, number one, typically a one-to-one substitution of Portland limestone cement in place of ordinary Portland cement is acceptable. They also recommended that Portland limestone cement could be incorporated into construction specifications for the DOT without any any major impacts. Now, as we do this, it's important that you do some testing. And so we've got some testing that we're gonna be sharing with you specific to the sources that you would use on your project. As an example, here's some testing that we did at Senex's Lions plant in Colorado where we looked at the comparison of the typical cement in that market, which is a type five cement. We compared that to a a limestone cement. And we also compared that to where we mix in 25% fly ash with your ordinary Portland cement and your uh, Portland limestone cement. And and by and large, what you can see in in the testing that we're doing, you're getting a very comparable performance in terms of compressive strength, whether it's at the one day, three days, seven days, or even even 28 days. And so we're doing a lot of this testing and we plan on sharing more of it with you um, in the future. And we're very excited to be able to share uh, this this information with you and help you develop mix design specific um, at your plants. There's a lot of really great benefits of limestone cement, especially in the, you know, it's really green from the ground up. It uses less energy. We're going to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and in turn, reduce the carbon footprint. It provides you that strong foundation that you've always relied upon, right? We're still going to be able to get you the same strength, the same durability, 
uh, finishing characteristics that, that your projects really uh, do demand. And then finally, it's a fairly seamless substitution. By and large, you're going to see a one-to-one -one substitution with your Portland limestone cement versus your ordinary Portland cement. Now, we do recommend that you do some testing to get familiar with it because there may be a few minor changes that need to happen. We've got some, you may have to work with some admixtures and that sort of thing. But by and large, um, it's a fairly seamless substitution uh, to implement this into your projects. Now, a few things that we want to finish up here with is that Number one, most specifiers are getting more familiar with Portland limestone cement and getting it into their project specifications. Our team is heavily involved in working with those specifiers to make sure that they know how to put it into specifications and get it approved for specific projects. If you happen to run into a project where it's not been accepted or it's not been approved, please feel free to reach out to us and our team can work with you hand in hand to work with those specifiers, work with the owners, and ensure that it gets specified and approved on projects in any of the markets that we work in. Uh, I want to thank you for the time regarding sustainable solutions and, and products that we're offering to you, and we're excited for 2023.